don't hold back. Uh, reach out, talk to them, look at your options. I mean, I didn't know what to expect when I reached out to you and I couldn't be happier. And it's, you know, something that I didn't have in my past was doing what felt right and what I wanted. Welcome to Fran Coach's Franchising 101 podcast series. Here we talk about all things franchising. What is it all about? Is it for you? How do you find the best one to own? And so much more. Now your host, Tim Parmeter. Hello, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to Fran Coach's Franchising 101 podcast series. I am Tim Parmeter, founder and CEO of Fran Coach, and your podcast host. Today, uh, we have another episode of the installments, uh, what we like to call In Their Words. And if I'm being honest, it's probably my favorite uh, of our segments, because this is when we're going to hear directly from Fran Coach clients who have become franchise owners. We're going to talk about their background, what led them to consider franchise ownership, how they navigated the process with the Fran Coach team, as well as what franchise they chose and how it's gone so, so far. Um, And let's be honest, we'll probably mix in some other things along the way. Today's guest signed his uh, franchise agreement a couple of weeks ago. Um, After originally connecting with the Fran Coach team, um, after he found the Franchising 101 podcast online. Um, So we're we're doubly excited about that. Um, But before we talk to to our guest and and tell you that story, we have to tell you this one. Who is Fran Coach? Well, we are a national search firm dedicated to working with individuals who are interested in owning a franchise. We are partnered with well over 500 of the top franchisors in the country spanning nearly 60 industries. Our goal is to help clients find the best franchise for them to own. And our goal of the Franchising 101 podcast series is to help educate people on all aspects of franchise ownership. All right, so that's us. Now let's get to the good stuff. Uh, Joining us today is um, a brand spanking new owner of one of our franchise partners called Senior Helpers. And it is Mr. Chris Dexter. Chris, how are you today? Doing well on this uh, hot and humid day. A little different than Arizona weather with the heat. Yeah, well, what's 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 the uh, what's the temp in uh, Chicago today? Uh, so it's actually funny because I was sitting in my car earlier because my girlfriend had a doctor's appointment, and she was like, "Oh, just sit outside." And I'm like, uh, "You know, it's <laughs> 90 degrees, and it feels like 99." So, <laughs> gotcha. Um... Well, hopefully the the heat and the humidity will help my beloved yet slightly pathetic Chicago Cubs finally win a game uh, <laughs> today. So, uh, I, think we're, I, so. I, think we're, I think at time of recording, I think we're at uh, 10 losses in a row. By the time this airs, it could be a lot more. So who knows? Um, but um, yeah, you're not going to get a lot of sympathy from me on the uh, on the weather, though it's cooled down a little bit here. I think it's... Uh, I think it's only like 102 today. So, um, <laughs> oh my we're, uh, yeah, no, it's what, well, Hey, it's the water temperature in the pool outside is 85. It's 75 in my house. So I don't know what else we need. So, um, there you go. So yeah, so no, it's all, all good stuff, man. But I, um, appreciate you taking some time and, and I got a, no surprise. I got a whole bunch of questions I'm going to ask you like pretty much always. Um, but give, <laughs> uh, Give give our wonderful listeners give us a little uh, taste on who the heck is Chris Dexter. What uh, give us a little bit about your background and kind of um, catch it, catch us up to speed on before we started uh, talking about franchises. Uh, yeah, so the short version or the you know Cliff Notes version. Uh, so served eight years in the Army Reserve, joined right after college, was a physical education major. In college, did six years in the fitness industry at various locations. Uh, I've done it pretty much all of, you know, your commercialized gyms and your private gyms and your boutique studios and all that stuff. Um, then went into two years uh, and counting in cybersecurity and just finished off my master's in cybersecurity. Um, and kind of realized that corporate America wasn't for me. Uh, so, you know, as you said at the beginning, found, uh, found you guys through the podcast. Uh, you know, I thought one day, you know, if I 
if I'm going to franchise, I should probably know a thing or two about franchise before I start looking, started listening and reached out. And the rest, as they say, is history. So, history. Um, yeah. Well, and, um, and uh, again, recording this July 6th. So I think it's appropriate to just a couple of days after our, our wonderful 4th of July. Thank you for your service to our country uh, for, for that. And, and, the also congratulations on realizing the corporate world sucks and figuring that out <laughs> much, much sooner than a lot of people. So, um, but you, you talked about kind of your, your, your journey. Um, and all of a sudden there was, there was kind of some spark that made you even kind of, you know, like, Hey, if I'm thinking about having a business and want to learn more about franchising, what's, uh, was there, was there a particular moment? Was that something you'd always thought about? Man, I'd love to have my own business. What got you really taking that first step towards even exploring this? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. So I've always thought about owning my own business um, in the fitness industry. It's kind of what you think about, you know, being a personal trainer and seeing you can't, there comes to a certain point where you've hit a plateau, you've hit the top. Uh, and the next step really for personal trainers or fitness folks is to, either expand and go online or really to open up their own gym. Well, living in Chicago, if anyone knows, it's very saturated with a ton of different gyms. So I thought, well, you know, gym's not going to really work unless I have a really specific gym or, you know, idea, something along those lines. Uh, So, you know, I took a few years off of thinking about it, decided to get into a career and then really, um, it was then that I started exploring options. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't have the support in the relationship I was in to go down that route. Uh, but now I do. And, you know, the more I thought about it, um, the more I, I've wanted it and I decided to go after it. Awesome. Um, so, and then so we get started, right? We, we connect, we kind of go through our first couple steps, build this out, and then... <clears throat> I think sometimes the most anticipated part of the franchise journey and process we take people, all right, today, this day, we're going to introduce you to franchises. And I think no matter how many times we do this and I say the same thing to people, hey, there's one of these that you might think I'm a little bit off my rocker with um, or roll your eyes at me about and just kind of kind of hear, hear that out. Um but it it, hap- it happens frequently. But the other thing that happens a lot is people come to us with a large amount of, I will say, industry experience and in, in, or experience in some industry. And for you, you've mentioned a couple of times from the fitness perspective, um, we started looking at a fitness thing, but rarely is it the is it the, the the industry people have the experience in that they move forward with. So. Um, if you can kind of think back to, okay, here are the, and I'm pretty sure we started off with three, if I remember correctly, um, franchises <laughs> that we, that we started with, um, w- do you have any recollection of that? Like the, your thought process on, okay, here are the three, um, that we're about to get started with. Yeah. Uh, so I know the three different ones, uh, one was the gym guys. The other one, grounds guys, and then senior helpers. Um, you know, I went into it with an open mind right after our first call and kind of you getting to know me and what I'm looking for. And then, you know, coming back with the three franchises, like, okay, you know, he knows what I want. He has experience in this. So I'm going to be open-minded and see what these are about. Um, granted, I know one was a fitness, which was the gym guys, uh, but I was still open-minded. and eager to learn more about them and see if it was a, a good opportunity for me. Um, unfortunately, I mean, not unfortunately, that one didn't work out after the first time I met with their franchise development person. And so then we, we, we did, and it, which is pretty common and, and doesn't always happen. Like after the first call, we usually first call or two, there's one just kind of starts to eliminate itself. Um, so then we got down to, to two and there were, you had a couple of very specific things in a business that you were looking for. Um, again, back to your, 
military background and and just kind of from a from a community aspect. So so talk to people about some of the things I guess maybe that ultimately led you to senior helpers, which has nothing to do with cybersecurity um, or <laughs> fitness. I guess um, c- certainly not at all. Probably not at all. I was going to say at least on the surface. So what were some of the things as you started learning about senior helpers that really kind of had them rise to the top for you? Yeah. So uh, to give a little bit of background before I get into that. uh, So very, very passionate about helping others, uh, which is why I was in the fitness industry. I spent, you know, I'm also an Eagle Scout. uh, So I spent countless times doing different service projects uh, and helping out with Eagle Scout projects and things like that. Uh, Did community um, service trips in college and was in charge of our service trips for the last two years of college. So that was a big component of me. It's, it's, you know, not getting into it for the wrong reasons. And yeah, money comes with it. But to me, it was more of what is an opportunity in a business that I can own that I can wake up to every day saying, yes, I want to go to this job. I want to help others, right? And I want to expand and grow. Um, so kind of senior helpers started hitting, you know, those those buttons or that nail on the head of, hey, this is a place where you can help people. This is a place where you're going to be able to help seniors and, you know, whether they have Alzheimer's, dementia, uh, whether they just got out of surgery from a hospital and need help around the house. Uh, you know, it's countless things that they help. And then it added on that. I also want to help the veteran community being a veteran myself. And, you know, a lot of them need help. Senior helpers, I can't speak highly enough of them and how they partner with the VA and, you know, they have two different programs that they offer. One that is, well, both of them are free to them. Uh, one is unlimited. The other one has a, a budget. But, you know, that was hitting the nail on the head. The home health is, or the home care in general is amazing as well, especially with last year and the pandemic and, you know, assisted living homes and senior homes got hit probably the hardest on anything. And it hit, you know, kind of hit home to me and, you know, hit my heart that that's huge because my grandma, who passed away on New Year's Eve day of 2020, um, she was 97, lived a great life. However, she lived in a nursing home where they didn't treat her right. And the stress I saw that it put on my dad, uh, it got in my head. Like, I don't want to see that stress to anybody else. It's an unnecessary stress and they don't do well. Um, so it's just senior helpers, just everything they would say, every talk I would have with Rob just kept expanding that gap between them and the other franchises. Yeah, perfect. And, and again, the, and so one thing we always talk about is what's, what's the best franchise for you, right? The, 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 the other two, and I think you, you came away, um, with, with this experience, right? Hey, good good people, good franchises, just not the right fit for you. And, and that's, and that's okay. And, and as we get farther along in the process, you see some of those differentiators, right. And, and for you, um, the one, one, one of the things we talk about throughout the discovery process is the get out of bed test. Um, so much that we have an entire podcast episode just on that. It is the most important thing in finding the right fit. Um, you're the ones that get your butt out of bed every day and go to work at that business. What's the business about? What are the core values? The people you're working with, staff, customers, community, um, does that excite you and get, get you out of bed or does it make you roll over and put your head, put your head under the pillow, right? And for you, some of those differentiators really overall being able to help your kind of journey from um, family from, from the military, from all of those things. Right. So, um, so cool. And so one of the last things that you do, um, in the process is you'll hear the term discovery day or meet the team day. And when you got ready to do that with senior helpers, which was still virtual, I mean, I usually tell people you need to be about 90% there. You were probably closer to 99 at that point. Right. <laughs> um, but still talk a little bit about what that experience was and just how, I guess, maybe comforting, reassuring it was to know that you were going in the right direction. Uh, yeah. I, you know, it's, I didn't know what to think of meet the team day at first. I know, you know, we talked and you kind of, 
kind of prepped me a little bit on what to expect. Rob did the same thing. So I went into it. Um, it was <laughs> first, it's a long day being virtual, right? It's four hours sitting in, uh, I think they use go to meeting uh, and just person after person you talk to, they get to know you, uh, you get to know them and what they're in charge of and their side of things. Uh, I think, I mean, as you said, yeah, I think I was 99%. And then it just the passion that you saw in the people that you talked to um, is just amazing. You know, it's funny because during that time uh, afterwards, somebody was like, oh, it's really hard to get along with Mary Baxter, who is their COO. And I was like, oh, really? They're like, yeah. I'm like, um, I had a great conversation with her. Her son's a Marine. She is very ambitious and is fast paced. I'm very ambitious and fast paced. And we had a great conversation. Uh, so, you know, it's, I think after that, I kind of was like, I'm sold. This is, you know, I don't have to think about it anymore where most people might take a week or so to think about it. I was like, I know what I want. I know what I want to go after. Uh, everything just kind of just solidified it for me on that day. And I was ready to go and sign the franchise agreement. Yeah. Awesome. Well, and, and the other piece that people sometimes forget or don't realize with franchising, franchises are awarded. So it's we're always kind of that cheesy, cheesy dating analogy, right? Well, I can want to marry my fiance all day long, but I mean, she could have just let me down there on one knee saying, sorry, dude, go away. Right. Um, so um, they have to want that as well. And it really was, I mean, it was like, you know, it was just that kind of perfect match, which is how that's supposed to, supposed to go where they're like, man, this is awesome. Chris is our dude. And you're like, yeah, this is awesome. This, this is the franchise for me. So, um, so let's see, let's, I, I know you're, you're just getting ready to get started with training, but um, senior helpers. So let's, let's see how you are as a new senior helpers owner. Um, give us a little pitch. Tell us what senior helpers does. <laughs> let's, let's see, let's see how you are on your uh, face of the business uh, owner pitch. Ready, set, well, go. I, I haven't ever practiced an elevator pitch or anything like that yet. So, <laughs> and I didn't me. tell you this, so I just totally put you on the spot, but that's all right. You'll be no, fine. I, it's okay. Uh, so Senior Helpers is a home care agency. They help uh, seniors or veterans or anybody that needs some type of help within their home, uh, whether it's from getting groceries and stocking the fridge to bathing, clothing. Um, it can be as little as five hours a week or as much as 24-7 in home living. Good. I, I like it. And you talked about the... Um connection with the VA, the uh, specific programs, Alzheimer's and dementia, both are, both are huge. Um, and then there is a relatively new partnership that I think benefits owners everywhere, but a little bit more perhaps in your area with advocate, what's advocate Aurora, right? Yep. A big healthcare yeah. um, kind of conglomerate. Yeah, so April basically. First, I believe it was, they got acquired by Advocate Aurora to be their, uh, I guess, primary home care aid um, facility for all Advocate Aurora places. Um, I think, oh God, I don't even, I know me and Rob had talked about it and another guy on the Meet the Team Day. Um, there's a lot of places in Illinois and Wisconsin that Advocate Aurora bought out. Um, I know the hometown I grew up in, they bought out two of the major hospitals by me. So it's, it's huge, especially with uh, one of the hardest parts being a senior franchise, senior helpers franchise owner is to try to get in front of the discharge manager or discharge officer at hospitals. Well, now we have our foot in the door already, so it's not going to be that hard to get in front of them and partner with them. Yeah, it's it's all that's awesome. And it was just uh, kind of looking back. We had uh, you mentioned Rob, Rob Cantrell is the vice president of franchise development for Senior Helpers, and he we had him on as a guest. I think it's um, episode forty five of our podcast where he was talking specifically about the Advocate Aurora and a couple other kind of real real game changers. Some of the technology that uh, they they've implemented. Um, so there's, there's a lot to, and again, I think this is franchising, but 
they go over the top with the level of support. So, um, so very, very, very cool. And that's a, that's a good, um, on the spot elevator pitch for that. So, um, <laughs> what's, um, and we appreciate you taking, taking some time, Chris, to, to join us today and, and chat about this. So let's say there's a version of, there's Chris Dexter 2.0 out there that is listening to this podcast. All they've really done is maybe this so far. They've thought about, man, it'd be great to work for myself, have my own business, freedom, flexibility, control, not having crappy corporate stuff, whatever. So what would you want to tell somebody that's maybe considering really looking at franchise ownership for the first time now that you've gone through, gone through this process? What would you, what would you want to say to them? Oh man, that's a good, good question. Uh, a handful of things, but I would say don't hold back. Uh, reach out, talk to them, look at your options. I mean, I didn't know what to expect when I reached out to you and I couldn't be happier. And it's, You know, something that I didn't have in my past was doing what felt right and what I wanted. Um, Obviously, make sure that you have the support that you need from your loved ones, whether that's, you know, your wife, fiance, girlfriend, family. But do what you think is best for yourself and go out and, you know, kind of as they say, grab the bull by the horn. Go do it. Life's not going to slow down for you. And it's only going to get faster as you get older. And you just need to go out and do what you feel is best for you. Yeah, that's all. I, I, and I love I love that man, and I appreciate you you saying that because um, it, it is, and it does. I think the 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 sooner, whether it's whether it's age or just timeline, that you really like, man. I, there's got to be a better way, or, or is there something? And and that kind of always go back to the the focus of our business model with Fran Coach is. We simply want to help educate people if this is the right path, and and it may not be. Uh, it may be the right path, but the wrong time. But at least you kind of walk away from that, like knowing for sure, instead of you sit there and wonder and wonder and wonder. And next thing you know, like fifteen years went by, um, and it be- becomes harder and harder um, as as people get older, and you get you know the, the mortgage gets bigger, and the cars get more expensive and the kids and they become more expensive dear lord so you guys just have the puppy to worry about still which how is how is the puppy she is growing by the minute uh she is 14 weeks and probably close to 30 pounds oh my goodness yeah Um, she's gonna be a big girl okay uh, 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 if if it was if it was not a female i would say let's be tempted i'd be tempted to say let's see what it would take to rename the puppy rob um, after our boy <laughs> Rob with senior helpers, but, um, so no, that's awesome. And, and Chris, seriously, man, thank you so much for, for coming on and joining us today. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Um, and one thing I will, you know, I want to add at the end talking about advice to people, it's, you know, I, I'm nervous, I'm scared, but any new adventure is going to be scary. Um, and it's just, Talk through it. Make sure you have the right mindset, and honestly, anything is possible. And and if you didn't have a little twinge of like that kind of anxiety or fear or whatever, like I, I don't think you, I don't think you're human um, w- with that, right? And so it's the find the right r- right match for what you're looking for, which which you which you nailed. Um, the great support system, which you nailed again, and then now it's like seriously, man, it's on it's on you. For, follow the plan, put forth the effort, which you're going, I have zero concern about that whatsoever. A year from now, when um, the big senior helpers annual convention, and you've been named senior helpers rookie of the year, um, then we're going to get you back on and you can tell us all about uh, how you killed it in your, in your first, in uh, 20, 2022. Okay. There you go. Sounds like a plan to me. Awesome. Um, and do something to like help my boys win a game again, please. If you could, I don't know, could you drive to the north side and I don't, I don't know, do something? Bat hits, field pitch, um, distract the other team, help help a brother out. We need to win tonight. So um, see what you can do there. But we greatly appreciate you coming on. And Chris, it's just 
from a personal, almost selfish standpoint, I've had a blast getting to know you and I have no doubt you're going to be hugely successful. So thanks again for, for, for joining us today. Thank you. Uh, You're welcome, buddy. And for all of our loyal podcast listeners, not unlike uh, Mr. Dexter here, uh, we hope our franchising one-on-one series continues to provide insight into the amazing possibilities that can be achieved as a franchise owner. Um, We hope you will continue to subscribe to us, follow us on your favorite podcast platform so you never miss an episode. Also, don't forget to check out our brand spanking new franchise website, franchising101podcast.net. Franchising101podcast.net has all the episodes, got a lot of more stuff coming. Um, Also a place to to reach out to us if you would like to uh, set up a first call, maybe take a chance to see, like Chris said, um, don't, don't sit there and wait for it. Reach out to us, set up that first call today. There's never, ever any fee for our service. So we encourage you to do that. Take that first step today to help create your better tomorrow. Thanks everyone for joining us. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Thanks for listening to Fran Coach's Franchising 101 podcast, where our ultimate goal is to help educate you on all things franchising so you can create your better tomorrow.